Hi everyone, it's Justin. Recently I did a video saying that bridal fashion actually reflects the taste of the decade it's designed in. And some people commented, oh this dress is hideous, it was never pretty. Or that dress is timeless. But I think that people's taste really varies over time because it's human and we get influenced by what's happening around us. And to prove my point, today I will put fashion into perspective by showing you what's trendy now versus 20 years ago versus 40 years ago. So 2018 versus 1998 and 1978. It's a fun video, but most importantly, if you think, if you're guessing that the contrast is pretty strong, you're right. 2018. For each brand that I'm going to show you, I have tried to pick three photos that best represent the brand's collection and aesthetic in that year. In 2018, Chanel is decently covering the legs in tweed with applied pockets on the jackets. The traditional version is a tweed with several colors, like black and white and gray, like on the left. The variation of it has contrasted trimming on the edges. The modern version is mostly black with just hints of shimmer. Overall, classic Chanel and quite formal. The same year, Dior is mixing formal and casual by combining a tailored plaid skirt with a loose slogan sweater. There is a more formal version, but then it's styled with a rock and roll t-shirt and leather boots. Going in the other direction, Dior also ventures into sheer designs where the underwear is visible, but that's less wearable. Now let's look at Italy. Prada is all about solid neon colors superposed to create a clashing color palette. If there is a print, then five. <laughs> And they don't match because Prada always plays with what is considered good taste and bad taste. That's a recurring theme in her work. There's also a more, let's say, wearable style with a classic plaid, but then with quite rounded shoulders and cropped white sleeves. But where is the thrill coming from in 2018? Which are the brands that are hyped as hell? Vetements is the champion of layering XXL layers to create a very tall and wide silhouette with broad, broad shoulders. Potentially unisex, definitely wild in the combination of textures and colors, an oversized trench coat, denim jacket or clothes that seem too big for you or typical of the brand. The other rising star this year would be Off-White. They're exploring contrasts like half snake, half matrix, <laughs> half romantic, half Amazon, half biker, half lady going out. It's a mix of eras, genres, styles, and silhouettes. But what they are hyped for most is the logo branding on their accessories. You can have a leather purse with a flower pattern, aesthetically very pretty, and then an industrial yellow strap with the brand name written all over it. In 2018, in the end, street style bumps into all of their aesthetics. What brand or what style best represents this decade in your opinion? 1998. The 90s are known to be quite grungy, but also minimal. The 90s weren't quite sure what they wanted to be known for. <laughs> I think that decade mostly went down as a reset decade after the extravaganza of the spotlight lit 80s. Chanel was about houndstooth chocars, camellias, pearls and tweed, because these were symbols of Coco Chanel and the head designer Karl Lagerfeld had been very loyal to the symbols of the house forever. Dior was under the direction of John Galliano at that time and displayed what Western Europeans think of when you say Asia, Orient Express, Shanghai 1900, very much in contrast with what people were actually wearing on the streets. Can you believe how different Dior in 2018 and in 1998 were? That's why hiring a new head designer for a fashion house is always a very tough decision. Same thing for Prada, except that it was already the designer who still leads the house today. In 1998, Prada was very tuned down in colors with some prints and patterns, but mostly quite safe and normal compared to now. Which designer made a splash in the 90s? If I had to choose only two, they would have to be Calvin Klein and Helmut Lang. Calvin Klein left a mark as the designer of the 90s and the one who stands for minimalism. Tailored looks that are also comfortable, fluid silhouettes, and in his case, a quite monochromatic style. Simple looking designs that fall impeccably, but not easy at all in terms of construction. Helmut Lang got a little bit forgotten, but in the 90s, he was huge. His aesthetic was also quite neutral. 
If one element in an outfit had a pattern or a special texture, then the rest would typically be smooth, white and crisp. I'm not a huge fan of grunge or punk styles, but there is also that clean, simple, minimal side of the 90s, which I think has influenced our taste today a lot more than we think. 1978. Going further back in time, it gets a little bit hard to find good photos on the internet to show you guys, but I did what I could. In the 70s, the fashion industry was a different world compared to today. It was still dominated by haute couture. Fashion shows were dedicated to customers and not to the press or to bloggers. Chanel was post Coco and pre Karl Lagerfeld, quite old school, and the house was in fact not doing very well creatively. The style was very classic, but check out the front row. The ladies all look the same, same hair, same outfits. It's interesting to see this. In previous decades, there was always the look. If this was the look of this season, then everyone would wear it. It's not the case anymore. And I think that that behavior ended precisely in the 70s. Dior was playing the young lady, slightly frivolous, less formal than Chanel by intention. In the 70s, Diane von Fürstenberg, a newcomer, designed the famous wrap dress. It's not necessarily innovative in the shape, but definitely in the fabric. It's knitted on a machine meant to knit tights. She just used bigger yarns and the result is a dress without its own shape. So it takes on the shape of your body and reveals it. That was quite modern and liberated. I also found this photo of one of her designs from 1978. The lady actually looks 80s to me, which means that the designer was truly ahead of her time. The designer of the 70s though must be Yves Saint Laurent. He put the women in suits with quite manly silhouettes, looking at it from today's perspective. He found inspiration in other countries like Spain or Morocco. His aesthetics range from theater dramatic to day-to-day -day playful, like this butterfly dress. When you look at fashion from previous decades, there's really anything that you could wear today and that would just easily blend in. But in their decades, all those pieces have been considered normal or modern or cool, all meant in a positive way. Is there anything in this video that you would wear today? And which decade is your favorite fashion decade? If you enjoyed this video, thumbs up. Thank you very much. And if you're interested in fashion, this channel is all dedicated to fashion. So don't forget to subscribe before you move on to a next video. If you missed the video on bridal fashion, by the way, just in case, I will link it here in the corner and also down below in the description for you. I'll see you very soon with the next one. And until then, take care. Bye.